Yo, what's poppin YouTube? Welcome back to the channel, Zach Lesage here. Today we're going to be covering over the top 10 best decks in May. We've just seen a lot of major events go on from the European International Championships all the way to Indianapolis Regionals, so I've updated a lot of these decks. I might not be doing top 10 decks all the time, but these are the decks that you want to be watching out for for the rest of May, and maybe even then after that, uh, they're probably going to be good until Astral Radiance is released later on this month, so by all means, check that out. All the deck lists will be available along with reference videos in the pinned comments below, so check those out. You could copy and paste those right into PTCGO. And of course, give this video a like, share the video, subscribe, and all that great stuff. Let's jump into our number 10 pick and get it started. You are now watching Zach Lesage, the best place to learn about competitive Pokemon TCG. Let's get it! Hopping into number 10 is Rapid Strike Malamar. Now, Rapid Strike Malamar has largely been a successful deck in this format, but as the Brilliant Stars format has developed, this deck has struggled against a lot of the field, and it's hard to place this deck on the list when Arceus is doing so well, because this deck typically loses to Arceus due to their large amount of HP, OHKO ability, and it's only worth two prize cards, so they're getting a lot more mild compared to other decks. Malamar can still knock out anything in the game though, and it's for a single prize card Pokemon, single energy attack, so that's why we're seeing it here. This is a list that I've been rolling with for a while now. Really don't see too much that I'd want to change here. Um, Rapid Strike Urshifu is not really seeing as much play, even though it will be on this list later. That's a little bit of a teaser. It's one of those things where I don't necessarily think we need Manaphy that players have been teching in. It's a cool deck, it's a budget deck, but it's really, um, you might not want to pick deck number 10 without a specific reason, so keep that in mind as we go through this list. Bringing some flavor to number 9 is Sylveon VMAX. Now, this is a deck that I would have not have ever expected to see this list, but after it made top 8 at EUIC and it got another top 8 at one of the regionals this weekend, it's one of those things where Sylveon VMAX does seem like a decent counter to Rapid Strike Urshifu when players are bringing that. I mean, it is largely one of the better Psychic type Pokemon that is not weak to Dark. And uh, that's really the category that we're going for here. Of course, we're going to be going with the strategy of having all the different flavor Pokemon, Dark, Fighting, Metal, Grass, all that kind of stuff with the Arceus package. I mean, we even got a Crobat VMAX in there for good measure. Uh, this is a combination of lists, but I think this one is well positioned for the metagame. If you are trying to rock a list like this, Sylveon decks do seem like they are going to crumble to some degree, like they're a little bit of an inconsistent mess, but if you're able to navigate through that, uh, this deck does look like a lot of fun to play, and it's one of those ones where it might just be better than you think it is, especially when you have type advantage against almost every single major archetype. Here's another deck, coming in at number 8, Malamar VMAX, our second Malamar deck of the top 10. I mean, what's a format when you don't have two Malamars that are good, right? And this is not a deck that I would have necessarily expected, but we do have Arceus V-Star in it. And I think that's really the core of a lot of these decks. And maybe we'll see a theme going on here for the rest of the video. Again, don't want to ruin things. Arceus V-Star is very good. If you don't have them already, go to ptcgostore.com, plug in code ZLASSAGE5, pick up some codes. You can also go to atlastcg.com, plug in code ZLASSAGE8, and you can pick up some physical cards. Both those links are in the description, by the way. This deck's all about just using Malamar VMAX as a late game sweeping attacker. You're going to disrupt your opponent with Path to the Peak, ripping cards out of their hand, Marnie, all that good stuff. And sometimes it just sticks. The typing's really good because Mew VMAX is incredibly popular. And of course, you got the Arceus core. Uh, this one's a cool deck. Haven't necessarily put the most effort into playing this one, but it is definitely one that I would recommend just trying out in general because it has seen a lot of success. Galloping its way all the way to number seven is Ice Rider Calyrex VMAX. Now, this one is a one where I might have placed it a little bit too high, but before you get upset, here's one of those things. I think Ice Rider Calyrex VMAX is about to take on the metagame. With all these Arceus decks seeing success, we do have ways to get knockouts with Max Lance, Choice Belt, Leon. You can knock out Arceus decks pretty easily. Path of the Peak is really on trend with these Mew decks, and I mean, you should do well against Whimsicott as well. Ice Rider seems like it's very well positioned, so sometimes we're going to have decks as the metagame establishes, or if we see a lot of top decks seeing success, there is an opportunity for decks like this to kind of creep into the metagame where they're able to do well against pockets of the metagame. Give this one a try if you have the Ice Riders already. I mean, we do have the League Battle deck coming out, but this one might just surprise you and come up with like a top placement here or there. I know Ice Rider is very cool, so try it out. At number six, we have Arceus V-Star with Inteleon. Now, this is basically the mother deck of all Arceus decks in a lot of ways because 
Arceus with Inteleon is the engine for so many of the top decks right now in format, but this is its own standalone deck and some players like the extra consistency that you get. So the difference between this deck and let's say an Arc uh, Inteleon with dark Pokemon is that you got the extra Charon's Care, you got all these different tech cards. So this deck might just be a little bit more consistent, although it's not necessarily going to be going after those matchups as hard. I really like the diversified things, so you have one Marnie, one Judge, because you're able to search things out with Shady Dealing or with your Star Birth V-Star ability. So there's so many different things that you can do with this deck. It is a little bit of plain. It's it's plain. I'll, I'll tell you it's plain. But with all these different options that we have, there is a little bit of spice in there. So if it's something that you're looking for, if you're looking for an intro to Arceus decks, I really think that this is a solid one to just kind of tackle on any general metagame, and it's going to be a good choice. Coming in hot at number 5 is Whimsicott V-Star. Now after its second place finish at EUIC, this deck was really poised to do well at Indianapolis and other events. While it didn't necessarily get those huge positions I think players were countering it, that doesn't mean it's not a really good disruption based deck using Trick Win, Crushing Hammer, Path of the Peak, Fan of Waves. I did take inspiration from all the lists that I saw, um, including Riley Holbert's top 16 deck that he worked with Mahone of Tricky Jim. I think this is a really cool way to be playing this deck right now. I do like Raihan, I do like Experience Share. I, I, I might really want to try this Whimsicott deck and just really see what it can do with these cards because when I was playing Frank's List, I really missed the Raihan. I like that it has both now. I really like the addition that Riley came up with with the Zacian and all that stuff. Cool things going on here overall. Maybe Whimsicott's a really strong play going forward for something like New Jersey. But it's really one of those things, I think it's going to be a strong play, um, if it is a strong play. A metagame call, I guess, is what I'm looking for. But Whimsicott, definitely one that you might want to start picking those cards up for. Really cool deck. We're finally getting up here on the list. At number four, we have Rapid Strike Urshifu with a Dark Inteleon package. Now, this is kind of a take on Gustavo Wada, Robin Schulz, uh, winning lists. And I mean, you saw that Tord came second with it at Bilbao. This deck's all about just kind of going Rapid Strike when you need to use Rapid Strike and using Baby Galler and Maldrys and all these other techs expertly. This is my current take on the list and it was very close to my second choice um, for Indianapolis. I couldn't go to Indianapolis if you read on anything. I basically got COVID right before my flight and couldn't fly out of Canada. But it's one of those things. I, I think it's really an awesome deck. Very difficult to play. A little bit flimsy. But for me, this is like built around my liking. If you don't like some of these cards, I see players playing Snorlax, Eldegoss, all these different things. Those cards are definitely options, but they might not necessarily be options for everyone. Of course, there's going to be some key cards that you want to be having in the deck, like the Galarian Maltris and all that kind of stuff. And really, you got to build this deck around your own playstyle and then see why the other players are playing other cards as well. I think that this deck might be really good. It's just one of those things. Can you play it really well? It, it's really one of those ones, if you are trying to test yourself as a player, give this deck a try. Buzzing all the way to number three is Arceus V-Star with Beedrill. This is the exact same list that Isaiah Bradner was able to make second place with at Indianapolis, and their whole group did very well with the deck. I think all of them were actually able to make day two. This deck basically takes the Arceus and Teleon core, as we talked about before, adds in single strike mustard, so you can copy, uh, get the Beedrill out, summon it, and then you can knock out things with special energies attached to them. It gives you a lot of like really cool opportunities to win against a Mew deck because they have fusion strike energies or against an Arceus deck because they have double turbo energies. So having a single prize card Pokemon that can get a knockout for a single energy, very good overall here. And Arceus V-Star and Shady Dealings allow you to kind of use Ultra Ball expertly to get your hand thinned down to use single strike mustard. I think this deck is awesome and it's one of those ones that... I, I really just need to play test. It looks just so fun to use Single Strike Mustard over and over and over again. Our runner-up deck at number two is going to be Arceus V-Star Inteleon with the Dark Package. So I think I like this one better than a traditional Arceus Inteleon because you do have the Maltras and Hoopa against Mew decks. And I guess any deck that really Geller and Maltras can be strong against. Now, there are some lists like Ian Robs that will also incorporate Galarian Zapdos and other techs. I decided that for the sake of this, I'm going to categorize them as one archetype. This is the one that I've been liking the most so far, and I think it just looks like a really clean list. You have opportunities to attack with your Inteleon, you have opportunities to have Hoopa, even if you run against a Rapid Strike. 
you just have opportunities in general and this deck does have very much an arc inteleon core for consistency so i think you get the best of both worlds however i would be interested in seeing how this deck develops over the next couple weeks especially after ian rob did win indianapolis regionals we'll have to see how late night goes going on tomorrow it's really one of those things where decks like this can change things up really quickly what deck's going to be our number one take your best guesses in the comments below i'm sure a lot of y'all already know what it is it also helps with the youtube algorithm if you just say hi or anything about there so get your best guesses in the comments below here we are at number one everyone's favorite deck mu v max now this version of mu v max is all about those double psychic energies and the double training cord. This allows you to get through random decks like Duraludon v VMAX, I was about to say V-Star, Whimsicott V-Star, and of course you just have a general Mew core. Um, this one's very teched for the current metagame. It's one of those things where if you are playing these events, Mew is one of the best decks to counter a large portion of the metagame. So oftentimes we're looking at the top 10 decks and we're like, okay, Arceus is there, whatever, all these decks are there. What happens when you run into like an Inteleon VMAX deck? Mew VMAX typically does well against decks like that. What happens when you run against a uh, Malamar deck? This deck does well, or a Durant deck, this deck does well. I think Mew is very good at kind of cutting through the middle of the metagame and getting those deep placements just by being able to, like, have opportunities in those matchups. So you're not just going to face some bad matchups here or there. Sure, you might hit some dark techs, but I do think that Mew VMAX is great at just, like, evading the formats and having opportunities in each game. That's why it is our best deck. But we'll see what it is for next week. We're going to have to watch the metagame, see where these decks are going. But it's well, we'll probably be doing a metagame analysis next week. But it is one of those things. The best deck for me going forward until at least Astral Radiance comes out is going to be Mew V Max. And that's what we got going on for this video today. Hopefully you enjoyed watching this and learning more about the top 10 decks. Let me know about what you think about these decks in the comments below. Totally love to hear some feedback from you. If you haven't already, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And by all means, I appreciate everyone for supporting this video. If you are trying to support anything, stay tuned to watch some more about my coaching and PTC Geostore. I have a great week of content lined up, so stay tuned for all that. Have yourself a great week. And remember, Late Night Series is going to be on Tuesday for the remainder of the season, just to accommodate players traveling to and from these major events. I'll catch up with all y'all later. Peace out and have a great day. Are you trying to get better at Pokemon TCG? Well, if you are, you're in the right place. I have for coaching at metafi.gg slash at Zach Lesage. That link is in the description and you pick up a coaching session from me and book it on the website. I likely have availability this week and you can see exactly what my availability cal calendar is at any given time. I have for training plans to help players get ready for any of their upcoming events, including getting all the way to the world championships, or you could pick up a one-on-one -on -one coaching session from me and learn the game at your own pace. I offer a variety of opportunities for players to get better at the game and it's one of those things where there's a lot of players who I've turned into regional, international, and even a world champion along the way. Um, if there's anything, it shows I have an FAQ on the website, so by all means, check it out and get better today. I'd love to help you on your Pokemon journey and be absolutely amazing to see your growth. Check out ptcgeostore.com, the best place to get Pokemon TCG online codes. There's a lot of selection available, and I have a discount code available for the website as well. You can pick up any kind of cards, just going up here. You can add them to your cart in any quantity that you need to get the cards that you need. And you can go to the discount code right over here, and you can put in code ZLASSAGE5 to save 5% on your next order of codes. I truly appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch this video. It means the world to me. And my goal with this channel is to spread my love of the game and knowledge with our entire Pokemon TCG community. If you haven't already, help Signal Boost this video to other Pokemon TCG fans by liking it, sharing it with your friends, and subscribing to the channel. Hopefully we reach our goals really soon. Check out this recommended video and have yourself a great day. Thanks.